Me? Uh. Yeah. What's up, Gut Gut? <laughs> Jackie. I thought Jules just let him out. Is it Gun Gun? I love you, Gun Gun. Hi, handsome boy. Aw. Gun Gun. It's our big ass doogie. Let me show you. Gun gun. Gun gun. Hi, gun gun. Gun gun. I guess he only wanted you to see his ass. It's so fucking hilarious. My gangster cat. Wow, well, he's not here. Uh, gun gun. Oh, shit. What's about to happen? It's going down. Oh, oh, oh. The things that happen in the hood. <laughs> You're stupid. Be afraid. Be very afraid. She's like, please. I ain't doing nothing. What you gonna do? <laughs> Get a monster. Come here, Gun Gun. Gun Gun, come here. God, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> Weed is good. Okay. I watched a documentary that said, uh, they took it away from us with the war on drugs because it caused us to have too much peace and people united on beaches and camping and just enjoying their lives and so they took it away so that we would fight and stay stressed and stay ill. It changed my opinion and my harsh beliefs. I was totally opposed and changed my beliefs when I met King Daddy B. No, he didn't, he didn't turn a good girl bad. Well, I guess he kind of did. It's King Daddy B for you. I'm pretty much gonna say I married the white snoop in the smoking. <laughs> Aspect because if we got it, we smoking it. Unless I tap out, which I often do. What he smokes in a day it lasts me a lifetime. <laughs> I love him so much. I'm a fire sign, and boy, do I get angry. Brian says, sometimes the only thing you can do for a person is just jack them in the jaw. For sure, as long as you need. I love you. <clears throat> See, my brother, <laughs> my gangster brother. Don't fuck with him. I'm telling you, don't fuck with him. He calls me sissy. He's so cute and so precious. I have the strongest brother in the world. Not that I'm putting him up there on a pedestal to fight anybody. I'm just saying, like, for what he's been through in life, like, I identify my husband as Snoop, and I identify, um, it's our Michigan version. <laughs> we're not as cool as Callie, okay? Well, I'm not claiming anything either way. We're all cool together, but... He is definitely the closest to Tupac that I'll ever get. So I told him that God sent me him so that I could love Tupac forever and ever and ever. And I really, even though I laugh and tease with my husband that my one free pass um, to cheat on him um, would definitely be with Pac. <laughs> like, definitely have that card. <laughs> so if you're out there somewhere, boy. <laughs> I'm just teasing. 
I know there's like a million like beautiful souls that would love to spend not just one night with you but eternity because on a soul level your beauty was so big your angelic wings touch so many lives and influence so many people that you'll live forever and you're a saint in Mama Bear's opinion and my brother too people might have identified him as the Hulk or gangster naughty label him however you will dissect and diagnose him and I and everyone taped up inside here this prison that somehow you believed we should sit captive in I'm here to let people free because life can be simple and easy and it doesn't have to be a big competitive game of slice and dice everybody apart we can live together unified united standing for truth I don't care what your religion perspective is or how you choose to live your life light or dark I don't care but at the end of the day you have to stand for truth like even if it's truth for yourself like you create your own truth you have to stand for that or what do you stand for and Bob Marley said love is my religion but my religion the foundation is truth like it's so mandatory here because I would rather know that you're upstairs hiding under a pile of dirty laundry terrified to let me down because you lost your job again because I will come up there and sit beside you and put my hand on your leg or on your shoulder or my head on your shoulder and tell you somehow God's going to make it right we don't have to know how we just have to trust and surrender and it must have really sucked to feel like you had to hide from anything stabilizing the truth because that made you alone and vulnerable to attack internal attacks of untruths and when they build and grow they start to haunt and attack you and they become demons that are attached to you and you carry them around and they're heavy they weigh like you're literally carrying mountains with you day in and day out by living the lifestyle of greed and blame and shame and guilt. This is why I'm okay with weed. I told you King Daddy B changed my opinion on it, but it wasn't him. His Aunt Nancy was so beautiful and perfect thin and the hostess with the mostess and she loved with every part of herself she was so beautiful inside and out and Nancy's husband who had passed um, away because the factory he worked in used some toxic chemical in the washing of their uniforms and because of that, she got cancer in her colon. And little by little, it ate away chunks and they kept cutting out pieces until she had no colon left. And in her final days, they chose to give her marijuana over morphine their whole family, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people, the closest to Jesus I've ever met. Sometimes I literally can see Jesus in Brian's actions here on earth. And I'm not the only one that sees that. I'm just the one that treasures it and calls it holy. And that's why I get to be his holy treasure. 
We're love alive, yo. It's what we do. If she would have taken morphine, I've watched many people cross over on morphine. They give it to you so you can stay comfortable and relaxed. The thing with morphine is that you are not awake. You are laying in a bed and all you can do is squeeze someone's hand. You can't communicate. You can't open your eyes and see them. It must be terrible. It must be like in a coma. And you lose full control of your flesh. But in her final days, they chose marijuana as an option, medically given. And again, these people love Jesus and they took a leap of faith, they trust and surrendered and tried to calculate how much to give her. And they ended up giving her a little too much. With marijuana, I mean, with um, um, the other one that's stupid that I don't like, morphine, thank you. Uh, no offense to the people that created it because it helps many people, no disrespect. Just my perspective, <clears throat> my opinion, my thoughts. Um, and it's for Izzy's ears and Cassie's. So if I'm not here anymore, they can look back and see how their mama believed. Aunt Nancy tried to get up and she was so stoned, she could barely walk. <laughs> but she was awake. So I had Brian assist her to the bathroom where there, and she tried to brush her teeth. And she wanted to do it on herself, on her own, because she's such a hostess with the most. Dude, she can do 20 things at once. Are you serious? She can brush her teeth on her own. So we let her be make her sit in a chair because we're not real sure about her steadiness and we don't think she realizes how wobbly she is so <clears throat> we really help guide her and take control and we give her like I don't know five minutes or we're like oh you know it seems like it's been long enough and we haven't heard from her so Brian goes back in there to check on her and she's got she's got toothpaste in one hand toothbrush in the other what up thank you yeah, and she's asleep. Toothpaste squeezed out the tube just a little bit. <laughs> and she passed out. Brian went in and got her and they put the stuff away. He helped her brush her teeth and got her back out on the couch so she could just chill. And she wanted a glass of water. So we helped her over to the sink to get some water. And I decided I wanted to take a video for my daughter, for Cassie, because I knew she wasn't going to be able to say goodbye, but at least she could see her aunt one last time. And the video I recorded of um, her aunt is hysterical because I tell her what we're gonna do, that we're gonna send Cassie a message and say, hi Cassie, I love you. And as I turn the video on and hit record, Aunt Nancy starts, uh, happy birthday to you and she's singing and so nana joins in just to support her so she doesn't feel weird or uncomfortable except when it's time to announce a name she doesn't remember who and she gets confused what's happening and then we all giggle and then she giggles and then we help her sit back down after she gets her water and we end up sitting around her on the bed holding her hand and we were able to laugh. Our last moments in life with her were spent in pure joy, happiness, unconditional love, and peace. And she asked her sister fearlessly, is it time for me to see Jesus? And her sister said, yeah, honey, it is. fearless sisters in a time of grief to sit side by side and hold each other's hands to say goodbye. Everybody should have a love like this because when we leave the planet, that's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that's real. It's the only true thing that exists. This is another reason I like marijuana because as a fire sign, I can definitely come across very passionate and very intense. Uh, some people might identify my anger as rage because I am 
the victim of an abusive childhood that lasted 31 years. So sometimes this Leo lion um, growls a little bit louder than she means to. Thank you, God, for sending me Izzy because definitely have softened up as a mom. And when she's down for a nap or she's off to bed for a sleep, I go in a different room far away and enjoy a little peace pipe, a little edible, a little cookie, a little gummy, sucker, a little syrup, a little butter, whatever it is, a little muffin. There's so many options nowadays. It's so easy if you want to try it. There's so many dispensaries. All you have to do is walk in and ask a question. You don't have to bring anybody with you. You don't have to feel pressured to buy anything. You can just go explore and see what the lure is and maybe it can bring you some comfort and peace. Because if there was a way to help have a solution in your life, that would allow you to have the end of life so holy. Why would you waste time not doing it? I was such a disbelief that marijuana could be good. And when King Daddy B assured me that it was a holy God flower, I trust him. I trust him to lead me to Jesus every time. I trust him to always forgive me and lead with unconditional love. I trust that his heart is full of understanding. That's good enough for me. I mean, shit, I can't beat him. And I definitely know that I just went through a whole healing with you right there. I was able to allow my emotions to be processed healthy. And I was able to communicate through it. I was able to... Um, emotionally be stable for my family when they entered and left in multiple scenarios. You know, it's just, it's a holy God flower and it's your choice how you want to try it out. But that's my opinion about marijuana and if anybody makes you feel bad for doing it and you're doing it to medicate yourself in a healthy way, it is in healthy boundaries where you're able to provide for your needs of your family and your friends and yourself and that's just a bonus it's just having a beer on a weekend kind of thing it's just something that sometimes it's in your orbit and sometimes it's not and that's okay <clears throat> now that it's more legal it's a lot easier to get and so Brian always tells me, King Daddy B, he always tells me, what you resist persists. So someday when you decide, maybe it'll be the end of life for you. And you'll just have a day laughing with your family because you finally trusted and surrendered to it. With a God's sense of humor, like, hey, dumbass, you could have enjoyed all that time beforehand. Just laughing and chilling with peace and love and understanding, chilling in the light like, hey, my heart is holy and pure and I do the best I can. I'm just a mama bear living in the hood. <laughs> Wrap me around the red tape because I'm climbing inside of it. Like, I'm going to bust the edges open and become the hood mama bear because that's where they need my love. That's where I want to shine in. I know that I have beautiful neighbors around me and... I want to talk about that. Yeah, there's some naughty boys around here that need a spanking now and then. But they just need love too. How you doing? You probably look like some yum-yums. Back to my 17-year-old self. And just to be known, I'm just... I've always grown up in a very sheltered community. And I never had diversity or cultural differences. And so one of my love languages as Mama Bear is to learn about other cultures, other ways of life. Um, Brother Joe uh, comes from Mexico, his family, and I love just listening to the stories of how he grew up and I love learning about the Mexican culture and heritage and candies and different kinds of foods and 
I don't know, just religions, beliefs, and, and what happens inside the homes, and real life, the reality of it all, and I feel that way about anybody. Like, if you have the understanding that we are Love Alive, yo, then what up? Let's talk. How are you? I'm Mama Bear. Blessings be, man. I just want to love. Don't you? Like, what else is there to do? We don't have much time here. Look at Ukraine. Any day we can check out. We can be gone. The time is now for all of us leaders of love to step the fuck up and stand up and scream and shout, love's where it's at. Boop, boop, boop. Fuck all that other noise. Blessings be and Mama Bear loves. We are Love Live, y'all. What up?